this goes back to right before high school. I'm still in, in grade school. Go down to the basement, and we, we played on there. And uh, I put a board in, under my shirt, took a knife and stuck it in the board, put red paint on it. I yelled and came up the steps and fell on the floor in the kitchen like I was stabbed in the back. <laughs> my mother, God bless her, she went crazy. Oh my God, oh my God, she don't know what to do. Because we have no car or nothing, she never really <laughs> you know, she wasn't, never used taxis or anything, like, what are we going to do, you know? And so after, after I figured she had enough, I got up and took the board out. <laughs> and that's, she almost killed me. Then, yeah, a little, little later on, um, I had this, and this was real blood, I was playing uh, out in the snow, out in the uh, field, and we had a little hill, and we'd slide down the hill. And I was on an old Pepsi sign. I'll never forget it. I'm sliding down the hill on this Pepsi sign, and all of a sudden my rot my hand gets caught. These are scars right here. To this day, they're still there. Um, my hand gets caught behind the rock, and the Pepsi kind of keeps on going. It just almost slices my finger off. And I can still see right where they put the stitches in. And my glove is just about hanging off, and there's my finger. Holy Jesus, man. So I go home, and my mother just about throws me out of the house. I'm thinking, holy, no, what, no, what do I do? My mother is totally afraid of blood. I'm here with my finger just about off. And just so happened that my cousin was on leave. He worked in Washington, D.C., and he lives over in the old house a block away. So he was there on leave, and I ran, ran over there. He took me to the hospital and uh, got me patched up. Cousin John, he's dead now. God bless you. He's my godfather. Um, so now, now, I, now I go to high school, okay? And there's a funny, uh, this guy, never never knew his name to this day. All I know is he smoked like a fiend because his fingers were yellow. But he'd always stop, pick me up, never say anything. I, and he was going over to work at, in some place in Pittsburgh, I think in one of the dress plants, because we had uh, dress manufacturing from New York City there. Um, they took a lot of the people, I come from a mining area, and a lot of the people there, once the mines, uh, the wives would work in the sewing factories. We were doing regular uh, fashions for Bobby Brooks and, you know, well-known stuff. Um, this was manufactured right there. So anyhow, um, he'd pick me up and drop me off for school all the time, but he'd never, on the way home, naturally I had to find my own way home. And my mother would give me money for the bus. And so we'd go, I'd go to the uh, pinball joint, because <laughs> we had to go to church every day in Catholic school. Hmm. Grade school and high school, you had to go to Mass every morning, 8 o'clock. So I went to church six days a week for, hmm. for the first 15, 20 years of my life. Six days a week. The only day I didn't go was Saturday. So anyhow, we'd sneak in, we'd go in this pinball joint, and we'd play in the pinballs, and here'd come one of the priests. And everybody would try and scatter because <laughs> the priest was there. Father, J uh, Father, the little guy, what was his name? Yeah, Father John. And uh, he'd bust us. And if he took you into the, because uh, back then, you know, he, he, would, he would take his fist and give you a good shot with it, man. He, they didn't hold back back in, in, the, in Catholic school back then. It wasn't like they treated you with t kid gloves. But, I mean, you had to really do something. And that was skipping church is what we used to do. We used to skip church. So I, now I spent all my money on the pinball machines, so I had no way of getting home. The bus, I, I spent my money on the bus, or on the pinballs. So I, uh, wow. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> look at that blonde, holy Jesus. Theater of the she's, mind she's, here. She should be against the law. <laughs> Man, she is nice. Anyhow, I would, uh, I lived uh, down river, okay, from the high school. So me, I would jump an iceberg and jump icebergs and cross the, uh, the river. As I'm jumping on the icebergs, I'd jump across. Until one day, 
I uh, jumped on an iceberg, and that sucker let loose, and down I went. And if my friend wasn't over, he just happened to be down the other side. If he wasn't there, I probably wouldn't be here today. You got a big, long, old tree and just threw it out there, and that's what I caught on to. Because every time I would go and try and get up, the iceberg would come along and knock me back down. So I was, I was dunked more than once uh, out, out on the pond. We used to have these ponds down there. We used to, we used to swim in the, in the river and play on the ponds. I'm out on the pond, and sure enough, this is another day, the ice gives away and down I go. Every time I go to grab the ice, it was just breaking away from me. And uh, both times, I mean, I, fi I finally did get to ice that I can get out of the water with. But both times, I went walking home like a, a frozen snowman or whatever you want to call it. Cause Popsicle, I, my, icicle. My, yeah, my, yeah. Clo my clothes were frozen stiff. I couldn't, I had to walk stiff leg and keep my arms on because they were stored. They were frozen. I mean, you know, this is the middle of winter, man. This is the, the stuff we used to do, you know. Uh, that was that was grade school, you know. And we had this one place, a guy, was an old man named Army. And now this is private Catholic school. We'd go over there after school and he'd charge a quarter or 50 cents for a quarter of beer. And I'd go over there and drink beer. Uh, I drank beer for a few years there. We had a little bottle of beer, but then I just quit drinking beer. I just it really didn't do anything for me. Um, but, you know, it was wild. Uh, but I also worked a lot, so I really didn't. I worked at gas stations. I worked delivering paper. I worked on the farms. I was always working. Uh, and I never really got a chance to do a lot of the things I wish I, I didn't have to work. But I come from a large family, and if you wanted money, you had to work. There was no such thing as allowance or anything like that. Never, never heard of allowance. Um, you know, I wanted to play baseball or take up an instrument. I couldn't. I had to work. Had to work. You know, I had to deliver the papers, or most of it was delivering papers, or work in the gas station. Once I got around 15 or so, I started working in the gas station. So I was always working, and I uh, I got raped uh, when I was younger by one of the neighborhoods uh, guys, and. Uh, the reason that comes up is I think about it. I got attempted rape. I used to uh, hitchhike home from the gas stations at night, and this guy picks me up, and uh, he comes on to me, and he's over to grabbing me, and I just opened the door and rolled out. I think this guy's going to rape me. I got raped a little bit younger than that. Uh, and it's uh, hard to admit that, but, you know, that's what happened. You know what I mean? Uh, went through a lot of things uh, throughout, you know, throughout life. But anyhow, come to find out, Griglock and them, there was this one girl. Um, <laughs> I guess she took them all on, and everybody got expelled. <laughs> she, she screwed them all. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking to Danny Conti and Marty Flynn. These are all guys I went to school with. We all got expelled, man. <laughs> I transferred over to a, a different school in 10th grade, but then um, I was really rebellious. I was, my rebelliousness never really left. I ran away from home, ended up in a place called Elizabeth, New Jersey, over by Newark. How old were you when you ran away from home? Uh, around 15. Um, between my 10th and 11th year in school uh, that summer. Um, well, it actually, it went farther into I, I left school for that whole year. And uh, I lived over in, with a sort of a rebel priest hmm. and uh, spent some time around the seminary and people studying to be priests. Because uh, I was still, you know, I was an altar boy and all that stuff. Even though I, you know, I, was, I was pretty wild, um, I was searching for whatever, you know. I uh, ended up at actually Father John was his name, Rebovich. He a, di a different Father John. A different Father John, big okay. Father John. It was Father John Small and Father John Big. <laughs> Little John and Big John. <laughs> Little John and Big John. 
and uh, Big John eventually left the priesthood because hmm. uh, he was he was kind of a rebel. So anyhow, he knew the the problems I was having and stuff. So he sort of took me in, and I went and lived over in New Jersey with him, and I learned about smoking pot and from a priest. Yeah. Oh yeah. What's the yeah. story of uh, well, that script? Well, he, no, he wasn't the one responsible for me smoking the pot, but I would hang out down the bowling alley, and I ran and made some friends over there in New Jersey, and uh, you know, uh, that was New York City, uh, right across the water there. So it was, you know, it was more, much more advanced than the small town I come to. These guys were smoking dope instead of drinking beer, hmm. and that's when I pretty much quit drinking beer and just started smoking dope. Um, That's in like the mid '60s. Let me see. Yeah, exactly. Around '63, '64, someplace. Well, right, in right there. when the Beatles, around the Help album, discovered yep. pot, yep. everyone else yep. did too. Yep, they used to call me the first Beatle because I had long hair before even the Beatles did. Because they they made me go get a haircut. Um, I liked long hair. I was, a re- I was rebellious. And Elvis, you know, come out with his hair. And but anyhow. So I'm over there, and I'm, uh, le- I learned how about dope, smoking dope. And I come back, finally, back to the little valley I'm from. And uh, my buddies are trying to score, the cor- score a quart of beer, and I'm over in the corner smoking dope, <laughs> saying shit. <laughs> All that beer stuff, you know. This, this is much better. So they uh, eventually... I would just say it wandered over my way or gyrated towards me because I was getting high on something else. And uh, eventually uh, I'd go to New York City and score some weed, come back and sell it to them. And I had myself a little business going, selling little weed here and there. And, you know, the other drugs came along, started coming along, LSD and all those things. And so I had a little side business going, selling marijuana and LSD. As a teenager still? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So oh, you've yeah. always been entrepreneurial, always been like a busy <laughs> bee. You, you, you've always been doing oh, yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, I still am. I, st- I still am. I still can't sit still. I, I, I go crazy. I got to find something to do. Um, you know, most people my age take downers or they're half dead to start with and a lot of them are already dead anyhow. Uh, they don't live as long, this long. I, a lot of most of the guys, I, I mean, I, there was a point I rode with motorcycle guys for a while, and every one of them guys was, was dead, and not all of them died from natural causes. They, some of them died a pretty violent death, and I don't mean getting run over by a car either. Uh, I mean shotguns and things like that. Um, in fact, the last one, Joe, he just died about two years ago. He was our leader, one of the oldest ones. So I, you know, I, I've been. I went through a lot of different changes. Uh, cars, you know, I, I loved cars. That's why I ended up working in a gas station. I had a uh, 1933 Ford ch- channel section, full race, one of my first cars. Uh, and I started riding motorcycles when I was like, I remember the first time I got on one, I got on the motorcycle, I was about 15. And they were down on me to figure out, trying to figure out where the brakes were. <laughs> So I get on this thing and I get it going all next thing I know I couldn't stop it I'm out in traffic and holy shit I'm on a big old electric glide I mean these things are big and I'm a little kid I'm on an electric glide trying to figure out where the hell's the brake on this thing and uh, you know I finally figured it out and that was my uh, my first experience with motorcycles and I've been riding motorcycles ever since I, I started riding bicycles when I'd always taken bicycles apart fixing them up and, and uh, Riding them and racing them and putting the cards in the spokes or the, you know, putting balloons on there to make it sound like a motorcycle. So I was pretty much a, you might want to call me a gearhead, but not to the point where I was devoted to it and spending all my money on it and all that stuff. But I, I liked fast cars and I still do. Uh, and motorcycles and I still do. I still ride motorcycles and bicycles, you know. Um, to me, it's all pretty much normal stuff, you know. Uh, so anyhow, I, I pretty much uh, finished out height. Well, I, I did end up uh, the high school, St. John's. It burned down. I'm up. I'm up in class, yeah. and I look out the window, and there was a little book, 
room, storage room, right on the other side of the wall, on the other side of the blackboard. I mean, you couldn't see it. It was a separate room, but we knew it was there. And uh, so I look out the window. I'm sitting by the window, naturally looking out the window, <laughs> instead of listening to the freaking nun. And all of a sudden, I see flames coming out of there. <laughs> Holy shoot, man. The building's on fire. There's, there's flames coming out of that window. I said, hey, sister, there's flames coming out of the window. <laughs> she says, uh, get back to your seat. I says, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm getting out of here. I, <laughs> you can get back to your seat if you want. I'm out of here. So I hit the door. I'm down the steps. And I guess the rest of the kids finally had dawned on them we should get out of here because they all started grabbing their, co their coats, but I was already gone. So then I started thinking, there's a news tip for this. <laughs> There's a radio station that offers 50 bucks for the news tip of the, of the, of the month. So man, immediately it hit, hits me. I can make 50 bucks. So you're, you're not thinking about, oh, I want to survive. You're, you're, you're already <laughs> on to the next thing. I'm already out of there. I'm you're gone. already I'm thinking about a news tip. Like who, what kid at that yeah, age yeah, yeah, has yeah. that presence of mind <laughs> in a moment like that? And everything's <laughs> so, burning down. The and you're thinking burning about, down. So I, I didn't have any money. <laughs> and there was a guy by the name of Lazik, Mikey Lazik. Lazik, Lazik, I'm pretty sure that was his name. I says, hey, Mike, I said, you got a dime? I said, I need to make a phone call. He said, nah, I said, but my sister works at the bank on the corner and she'll let us use the phone. So I went down to the bank with Mike. I said, I'll split it with you. And um, I call the radio station and say, say, John, school's burning down. News tip of the week. And uh, sh sure enough, it was the news tip of the week. Hmm. And uh, they send a check for 50 bucks. I split it with Mikey. I went home, got up in my bedroom, and watched the school burn down. <laughs> <laughs> and no school. So <laughs> is, that, is that when you learn that you have to have money to make money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> I don't believe I didn't have any money though. I mean, because normally well, you had I, to borrow it. So. Yeah, but normally I, I always had money. That's one thing I had because I was I was a hustler. I do chores, like I said, you know, shovel walks, uh, take the ashes out, run run errands for people. I always had a couple bucks. I was a rich little kid, <laughs> but at that time I was putting it all in the pinball machines. So, Self-made rich little kid. Self-made rich little kid, but I like I said, I was putting it in the pinball machines, so I was blowing it on gambling. <laughs> Essentially. Yeah, All right, yeah. that's, that's a one-minute warning. We should um, probably... Uh